All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought in today's video, we would talk all about pruning fruit trees and not just, you know, these peaches behind me here, but also a lot of the stone fruits, a lot of the apples, the pears, we'll probably look at the persimmons and we may even look at the grapes as well, but I wanna just cover pruning um, and show you some of the pruning I've been doing over the last week or two. I've already at this point come over the trees about two or three times and have made my cuts. I've come back again later and then made more cuts and have reevaluated the trees. And I thought it would just be, you know, rather than just showing you guys this whole process of every cut I made, um, I think that's an entertaining video, but I don't think it's a very educational video. I wanted to really just show you guys the shape of the trees now. This I think is worth more than just showing you where the cuts are. Let me show you and talk about why I made certain cuts on these trees um, so that you, get an, you can get an understanding. You, know, you can get the blueprint, you get the book, the manual, so that when you actually do this at home on your own trees, this makes a lot more sense to you. Uh, we're gonna show you guys older trees, younger trees, trees of different sized rootstocks, and many different species of trees. So these are the Aspiate peaches. The only real way that peaches work, and every tree is different, is if you renew the wood every year, right? You have to have one-year-old wood to get the fruit buds. So this is one-year-old wood. You can tell by the color of the wood. It's typically a redder color. And the older it gets, it becomes more gray or more brown. So you need to have one-year-old wood, but if, if you have a tree, as an example, that's an espalier, which is really not what you should do, or even if you had a tree that was a vase shape, you still have to renew that wood. It doesn't necessarily matter what the form is. You gotta make sure that you can set up a system, and that's kind of what I've done up here at this top tier, right? We have three tiers in this espalier system. You have to set up this open vase, open vase shape because you're going to be able to renew the wood a lot easier that way. Now, as an example, we've already cut out a number of these big scaffolds here, big branches that were three or four years in age. So you can see this one here. This branch is probably three or four years old as well. And there's a number of these. These are probably two or three years old. This one back there is probably four years old. This one coming out in front of me that actually is quite a nice branch. I like this one, how it leans outwards, getting that sunlight and opening up that center of this top tier. This is probably four years old as well. So, um, you know, some of these scaffolds on a typical tree, and we're gonna look at that typical shape in a minute of what a, what a peach tree really should look like. Um, when you have something like that, you know, you want to be able to take out these scaffolds at a certain age to thin this out and then have the scaffolds renew and replace themselves over time. So these younger ones here are coming in to take up this space. But at some point, having both of these two right next to each other, or maybe even this one right next to this one, is just not going to work. We're not getting enough light. We're not getting enough airflow. And especially in the summer, I mean, if you can imagine these trees, I've done a great job this year of opening up that center. You can throw something right through that. But even in the growing season in the summer, this is gonna fill itself in real quick, right in that center. So you gotta come in here. If you want good fruit quality, you want less disease pressure on your fruits and even on your trees, you gotta come in here and thin out the center and even keep up with that during the summer. So that's what I've kind of focused on. This, this bottom layer here of uh, espaliers, typically what I like to do, no matter what the species is, have the, tr have the branching come outwards and sort of downwards. Um, and that way it can uh, you know, take up this lower space. It's easy to harvest. Even if I were to cut off everything up here, I still would get a great harvest from what's below. Um, and it would get good light you know, in that sense. But if you're gonna have this upper stuff, again, and this is exactly what I focused on is cutting this stuff out in the center and making big cuts. You know, we cut out a scaffold there. We cut out another scaffold right there and there. Uh, smaller cuts actually on, on those trees or on those branches. And I've kind of thinned this out a bit more. Um, what I probably should do is even consider this again 
is because right here we have one, two, three potential new scaffolds that are coming in of a similar age. I don't need all that. You know, even this branch here kind of is shaded out by this taller thing, this taller system, excuse the camera, right above it. So again, this one here is kind of shaded out by this right here. And if you kind of picture this, it's hard to imagine. But this whole thing right in this area is kind of a mess. So that's just the struggles, you know, and it's better, I think, to cut out more than less because, you know, like I said, all this stuff down there at the bottom it would give me so much fruit. I mean, how many peaches can you possibly eat in a season? Uh, I mean, it's crazy how many peaches I get. We're talking this year, probably it's going to be easily in the thousands. So how can I eat that many? Also, I don't want to preserve that many or really any at all. So the best thing I can do is give them away, but giving away, you know, hundreds of peaches, peaches, you know, that can be a, a difficult task. <laughs> Unless you got like a, a food bank or something. So, you know, I don't know. To me, it's just not worth it to have all this disease pressure up here that then lowers the fruit quality on the entire tree. You know, it's all about getting that light, not just, you know, having that open center because that gets you the light in the center. It makes use of the most photosynthesis on these trees, right? You want to be able to have every single leaf getting photosynthesis. That is going to give you the most amount of sugars and carbohydrates the tree can generate to then put that into the fruits. And you're going to see that in the, the measure of your bricks. If you were to take the bricks, squeeze out some juice, put it on a refractometer, you would see a higher bricks. Just by having a more open center, having more photosynthesis hit your tree. That's absolutely critical. The other big benefit is the airflow, which then uh, you have less disease pressure, right? So it's a no-brainer. On the peaches, you get something called rot, and it happens all the time in these humid climates. It's so hard to fight, and you could fight it with sprays and other things that you might want to do, but just having the right form can go such a long way. I mean, it's almost impossible to avoid it, but like I said, if you get the right form, and if, you, if I cut out more up here than probably... I really should come in here again. I need to come in here again to these trees specifically. They grow so quickly. They're standards. I need to thin this out even better than I have. Um, I'm going to get the best fruit quality possible. And this Alberta, that's what this tree here is, is here on the right, did not fruit and has never really fruited that well in terms of its fruit quality, right? It's put out plenty of fruits, but the quality's never been up there. And I wonder if oh, well, maybe it's a lot to do with the way I was pruning my trees. You know, I, it's crazy. You think you know about pruning until you really get a, a crop of peaches or a crop of plums, and they're just a disaster, you know. Um, here, over here, let's see, this is a younger persimmon tree, and this guy is getting its form. This is proc. Um, I probably could cut this out, but I'd rather you know, get all the fruit I could, but this is the main leader here, and I've made a cut there to cut out that central leader, open this up a bit more. You could see the scaffolds, one, two, three, four, and we have some uh, scaffolds up here, potentially, if I wanna cut out something lower down on the tree, like this one probably will come out in the future, as it might be a bit more shaded than the others, just based on the angle of the sun. This is kind of the standard thing, right? You want to get your tree grow it up and uh, don't be afraid to cut it. You know, that single stem whip, as an example, don't be afraid to make that cut. Do I have any single stem whips at this point? I mean, this is kind of, here's a young sejo persimmon here. It's just the main whip at this point. There's some branching here at the top. I just really want this thing to grow. It's been taking a while to get established, but uh you know, that's, it's a very similar thing is that you want it to grow up as a single stem whip. Cut it back at a certain height, maybe around your knee, maybe at your waist, depending on how tall you want your tree. Same thing over here with this quince. This guy actually got killed back um, by some branching that fell on it uh, from the, the shade tree above. You can see that big shade tree there. It's the same thing. You want to make your cuts, bring it back to a lower height and it'll start sending out these branches. So even though I have, you know, two nice branches here on the left and right, 
what I want to do is actually take off the tips. And what I probably want to do is even bring it back even further at a lower height and really get that branching to come in at a lower point. Um, the Anamora spies over here, this is more a traditional sense, younger trees. These are plums of what you might actually want to do with, the, with your spie is actually grow something that should be a spie to plum. Um, it's a very similar situation, having the lower growth down here, forming this open center at the top. And even if I wanted to, I could bring this, these branches way back and have some lower uh, branching here. Keep that in check in the summer rather than letting this grow all summer, just keeping it in check and I would get nice plums. I don't have to have crazy sized Aspaye trees, right? They don't have to get like that. <laughs> you know, I think it's nice to have all that fruit, but um, you don't really have to do that. You don't have to maintain the trees like that. I could, if I really wanted to, like I said, bring back that top layer in the summer I mean, we're talking about winter pruning right now, but to, to be honest with you, summer pruning is really important. And I, I think it's um, something I'm really, really gonna focus on this year on all of the trees. You know, I think it's important to get them established and not really worry too much about summer pruning where I'm at. Maybe in a longer season climate, that'd be something you would do. Uh, but getting them established, I think you could just do that in the winter by keep cutting them back to a lower height, getting that branching that you want. Keep doing that over time, you're gonna see success. The birds are, uh, are out and about. It's just so warm out right now. And then if I bring you guys over here, I wanna show you these two plantings. This is really critical. I think you'll learn a lot from these two. Here's actually, by the way, two of our cherries, the white gold and the black gold. Just cut out the center. That's all I really did. Made sure I even cut out the center within the trees themselves to have even more of an open center. I made a big cut right in there. I think I need to actually get a saw and chop that out. I forgot about that. But uh, opening up the center of the trees, but also making sure there's nothing here in the middle. You know, even in the future, probably cutting out some of this other stuff that's going towards each other. You gotta keep that center clear and this is a really good example over here because these trees are my plums, um, plum cots, and apricots. So these are all very similar in how they fruit. And you can see I've done a, an interesting thing here that you know Dave Wilson Nursery has promoted and other people have recommended where you plant a lot of trees in the same hole. And you can see, look how many of those white things down there at the bottom there is. There's quite a bit. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight trees in a very small area. Um, you know, it's just not something I would recommend. It's, it's difficult to maintain. You don't really need to do this. You plant one tree in the center and then you graft all the varieties onto that one tree. Probably a standard is the way to go. And um, I think that's a little bit more difficult for the average person, but it's way more difficult, I think, to maintain this. And especially if you don't plant the trees correctly. So this one here, you can kind of see, this tree is, uh, I think my Satsuma, or this might be the, um, let's see here, Santa Rosa. So this is the Santa Rosa plum. And this guy was just planted too much in the center of this planting. So it's kind of occupying weird space and I've had to force the branching outwards because you don't want anything in the center, right? You want to be able to throw that hat through the middle. You want to be able to even stand in the center. This is going to fill in probably quite a bit in the summer. Got to keep on top of that, as I said, with the peaches. But um, this is kind of just positioned poorly, I, I think. And then even this plum cot, this one here behind me, I don't even tag is now gone might be somewhere down here but uh, this guy was planted even even in an even worse position excuse me and I'll show you guys actually what I mean if you can see that so ignoring these two trees this is a bit weird because there was one here that died so this one was growing out this way but you see what I'm saying here is that this is supposed to be clear and this tree should be more over here. 
That was the Santa Rosa we looked at. And then this tree back here, this plum cot, is right in the center of the whole damn thing. And that's just not good because this thing is now occupying all that space in the center. And I've really had to focus on pruning all the growth that was growing out this way or growing out in, in just the wrong direction. And this tree is in a sense kind of paying for it. Um, last year, and this is why I've really come to this realization, you know, just with the peaches, we did a video on the peach trees not too long ago. And the peach, uh, video that we did talked a lot about disease and a lot about that Alberta and how it didn't put out good quality fruit and how it's really fighting with disease over here in this planting that we're going to look at in a minute. This tree here put out hundreds of peaches and it did not, I did not get to eat a single one because of disease. I know bugs, plum cacurlio is definitely a big part of that as well, but you know, between the rot and the plum cacurlio, I didn't eat a single one. And you know what? They weren't even that good. They were nowhere near as good as they should have been because I couldn't get them to ripen to perfection. And also because the tree was heavily shaded. It was not getting the photosynthesis. It wasn't getting the bricks that these plums need. So by opening this up and really pruning out a lot of this tree, pruning out all the center, we should have a lot more success this year with this one. Um, again, it's just in a bad spot. You know, this Italian prune plum is just odd and how it's shaped and how it's doing but you know we're making do with what we've got and i think this is just a really good example of what not to do and that's why i'm showing it to you guys you know having this tree here in the center if you're going to do this here's how you should do it okay this is going to make a lot more sense because i have another planting in the front these are peaches and nectarines and the peaches and nectarines um, in addition to the trees I already have, by the way, um, it's amazing actually that you can just walk right through the center of this. Look how well pruned that is. I mean, that just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Now, this is the back side. This is the north side of the planting. The sun comes from over here on this side of the house and then finally sets over here west. So the sun is really coming through here like this. And what you want to do again is be able to walk right through this. I can stand in here. There's no issue whatsoever. So this is kind of what you want to do with these trees is have one planted here. One of these guys, even if you're going to do it like this, which I, again, I don't recommend it, but if you're going to plant this many trees in one hole, here's four, and there's two of them behind me, this is how you have to do it. Angle them away from each other. Pretend as if this is a scaffold, this is a scaffold, this is a scaffold, and etc. on one tree. And you know what? These are now a part of that whole system as well. So instead of thinking of this as four different trees, this is now one tree with all these different arms coming out. Again, keeping the center clear uh, and open. That's the only way you're gonna get good disease pressure, um, good airflow, you know, good fruit quality with the sunlight coming in here, getting as much photosynthesis as possible, and that's it. Now, I made some big cuts right here in the center. I'll show you guys. And this is the key. Really has become the biggest um, thing that I've done with the pruning this year and I think it's absolutely critical. I would not be showing you guys this if it wasn't. But look, here's a big cut here in the center. Another cut right here in the center. Even these branches here in the center, I've even topped them off and made sure that the growth is growing outwards. Again, all of it's growing outwards. Um, and then the same thing behind me. Look, this is a big cut in the middle. This was the biggest and most problematic branch of the entire system because this was a giant scaffold that was way in the center taking up all this space all this real estate same thing with this one and this one and that's really all i've done is i've come in here pruned out the middle this planting makes a lot more sense it's going to get a lot more light the fruit quality is going to be better but again i got to keep i got to stay on top of this because if i don't stay on top of it in the summer, it doesn't matter. It's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to do its thing. 
and those branches are gonna fill up the middle. There's prime real estate for the sun in the middle of the trees. So the tree is naturally gonna think, oh, I gotta fill up that middle space, I gotta take advantage of that. But you don't want that. You gotta prune out that, that middle stuff there and keep up with it throughout the summer. That's how you're gonna get the best airflow. That's how you're gonna get the best fruit quality. So rather than showing you guys you know, my actual cuts, my actual pruning, I thought this was a lot better to come in here and actually show you guys how I've actually pruned these trees. Uh, the pears are a little bit different, but you're trying to get that pyramid shape actually with those. Um, but even, um, you know, this is just good principles. Every tree is a little bit different, but you're starting out young in a very similar fashion, getting that lower branching getting an open center in most situations, trying to think about light when it comes to actually pruning your trees and making those cuts. Thinking about airflow, because everything we do is in an effort to promote fruit quality. You could have you know, 100, 500, 1,000 peaches, 1,000 fruits, whatever it is. If they're not of a good quality, you're not gonna enjoy them. Uh, you're gonna be actually pretty creeped out. You're gonna be pretty down on yourself because your tree is just diseased. The fruits are diseased. Um, all this hard work and all this effort is just finally coming to a point where it's actually a problem. You know, as the trees get older, you're gonna realize this. As the trees get bigger, as the trees grow more quickly, this especially in humid places, you're gonna realize that's what I have to do. Um, it's gonna probably hit you then. Now I hope it hope this got through to you now, but we need to focus on this first and foremost in the beginning. And it's so hard to realize that. So don't be down on yourself, but there's my advice, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Hit that subscribe button you got this far and share this with your friends. Somebody uh, you know that's just now getting into fruit trees. I'm sure this is a good video for them to kind of understand well, what is it that I should at least be doing. All right, we'll see you guys later. Take care.